um, O House looked at trying to um, capture the road that ran along the side of the house by putting a permeable screen here. So when you're inside, you actually get get a sense of the road. Get you you actually gain the road as a part of your house. Although there's one or two cars drive mm -hmm. past. The idea is you can open up the glass. It's a pretty private you see all, road. You see so through the screen, but you can actually that the road really comes in as a part. It becomes your front room, but it is slightly protected. How the, how the street becomes really a part of the house just by sliding the... Why did you do that? Because we felt the house was so tight on, yeah. on the side. Yeah. Right. And so it was just trying to get some visual link a bit further beyond which would make the house feel larger. So you're getting a shot across to the park, right. the parking across the way. Right. If it's fully enclosed, it feels very, very tight. Right. Um, but but doesn't, doesn't this also expose the people living there in, uh, in, well, that's in the it does in, I don't think it does in a very Japanese way in terms of the way that most Japanese streets work traditionally. I think the the screen helps. Uh, of course, a lot it works. For that. It works as a nora, and it works as a shoji. It works in many many ways. But the, it's mm -hmm. it's not it's not fully opaque. Yeah, yeah. No. there's there's a, there's this um, amb ambiguity between. But the idea of this this opaque uh, screens is is still an um, um, actual. But in, in Japanese architecture, people still um, accept or, or actually want this kind of. Um, well, I think because this mysterious relationship. Well, I don't think it's mysterious. I think it's just a pr practical thing that in a in a <laughs> station or in a in, in in a drinking area where thing people are very very pushed together, yes. very close together, you've got to find ways to uh, actually separate that. And so a Noran where you just block your eyesight actually mm -hmm. does that really well. But below it's open, so you've got to kind of see if it's full or not. And you you're given a semi, you're given half a hint. And you still can yeah. hear. And so in in your mind it's se separated, but you're physically. Really, almost yeah. next, ne it's, next, it's next to like one another. You're not supposed to know. These are very subtle trends. You don't need yeah. door between yeah. people <laughs> and yeah. inside. Yeah. yeah. Um, for Heidi House, this was a temporary building and a very low cost building, and mm -hmm. we had to keep to keep. If we kept three meters away from the perimeter. The line. line. Uh, we didn't have to have. Uh, if we kept three meters exactly three meters away from the boundary line, the um, the wall of the house here didn't have to be fireproofed because yeah. there's, a, there's a there's a fire zone. So this context was about the regulations here. Mm -hmm. And so if we did that, we could have a wooden structure, a cheap structure, didn't have to be fireproof, and could be a much light, lighter thing. If we'd have built up against this wall, it would have to be co concrete or fireproof wall, mm -hmm. which was more expensive. So yeah. th it's that type of context we, we work with. It was a yeah. bit less um, conscious, really, that. But we wanted people to see inside and people to see out. And there's a nice I think play. more than people seeing inside, we wanted people to be able to look out. And uh, mm -hmm. this being a residential area, but we knew full well that the guy was gonna, it, it's gonna be his <coughs> sort of uh, little Home office mm -hmm. and uh, a photo studio as well. Ah, so, you know, um, therefore, the normal windows, uh, they would have looked very residential. Yes. But then people would have looked in and would have realized hey, this is not a residence, yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be a residence. Yeah. So therefore, the, the sort of Tyrolean cutouts yeah. um, are, are, are kind of letting the light in. People can look out, but it's very difficult to look in. Sometimes it happens by by chance as well, but I think it's it's more than chance. It's maybe just intuition that just comes out in an interesting way. For this particular project, the thing was that we it was a very very low cost building. It was basically a black box with win, with windows in it, and only when we were like sort of trying to pull it through a little bit more, but was a uh, foreign guy Joe in our office. Mm -hmm. couldn't understand Japanese and he, they asked to put a logo on the building or a sign mm -hmm. and he got the face because and he doodled, he doodled more and more and more. We said, why don't we just put that do doodle because he couldn't understand what was mm -hmm. going on, he was just drawing. Yeah. I said, why don't we just whack that on the build building like, like, like an ivy 
and make it so it's, but they wanted to sign so they could see it's tucked away in the back. We have to keep it back away from the sight lines and different things. The story was that this is in a very um, convoluted back street. Hmm. So it's it's difficult to find this place anyway, yeah. actually. Yeah. So it's a very residential uh, area, but you know, hair salon, you want your clients to find you. So you know, rather than just putting out a little sign hmm. that says Sinden, so that why is not the whole yes. building a the sign? sign? Right. And uh, you know, Sinden is not <laughs> as it, it is a got... hair salon. <laughs> that is known for being a bit radical anyway, a bit punk on mm -hmm. the punk side. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, people who are looking for the Sindon hair salon, they'll, they'll instantly know when they see this, and yeah. so I think this is it, <laughs> you know. Um, this was their logo to start with. Right. And uh, so, as Mark said, then Joe started to do the embellishments. Mm. And once it was finished, it actually blended in beautifully with the neighborhood yeah. it was having all the sort of ivy overgrown this on the side. Yeah? Nice, these two. Yeah. yeah, But it, that really didn't come, and we're very honest about that, that wasn't the concept. That was an no. accident. It, yeah. yeah, but it, I think these things just happen. Yeah. It, that there is, in the back of your mind, it's working like that, I think. You know, we wouldn't have chosen that graphic. Of course, of course. And so you've, you've got all of this filigree here and the filigree of all the handrails yeah. and stuff and the, the plants. And so it is like a plant growing up, mm. the thing. And it, it made a lot of sense once we saw that thing. That would be really nice on the building. And then you have this big fight architecturally, whether that's, can you can you tattoo a building? Is that, is that, is that? Architecture. Is that architecture? You know, is it just it's by sticking a graphic not. on? You know, but you know the house does the house and shop does work really nicely in day and night, and oh, wow. you know it's so there are some nice things going on there. But it just adds another layer to it. This is a hair salon. It's fashion. It changes, and so I think it can be quite right. light in that sense. The Leaf Chapel uh, had a very big effect, uh, effect uh, economically because our client bought the hotel, the Rizonari Hotel, when it was bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And because he was in a wedding business, he said, okay, hey, this, uh, this, this, this hotel doesn't have a proper wedding chapel, let's have a wedding chapel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't have much money to publicize this uh, wedding chapel. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you do something uh, weird and wonderful that publicizes itself? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that that's what we've done. <laughs> and now it's uh, in peak season. You have about ten weddings a day. Mm -hmm. That's that's a lot. That's ten a weddings lot. a day. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty much a wedding factory, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, all these wedding uh, parties need to be mm -hmm. accommodated afterwards. And uh, that's how. Uh, you know, they soon needed a reception room for mm -hmm. the, m more reception rooms for the party, which is, so we, he asked us to build Brillare, and then uh, more and more people came and realized that it's actually a nice place to stay, even if you don't get married, and lots of families came, so we built a bath house, and, oh, uh, you know, then the, yeah. yeah, and, and I think wow. from being a bankrupt hotel to, to what it is now, uh, just because we we'll started some with things the chapel, over lunch, so. um, that was, uh, I think, the biggest value-enhancing yeah. project.